Hi everyone, welcome to Learning S Script uh, tutorials. In this video, I'm going to cover what is an S Script contract. So starting again, we're from uh, sscript.io homepage and uh, let's go to documentation, which is the uh, official documentation for the S Script uh, language. So after we go there, let's go under introduction, let's click a simple smart contract. So if you look at here, we have the hello world for script smart contract. The basic you can see is denoted by the keyword contract. So an script contract is very similar to the, to the concept of a class in an object, object oriented programming languages, such as Java or JavaScript or C++. So here I put a, a very simple table comparing these two. So one is OOP, short, in, short for uh, object oriented programming languages, such as uh, let's say Java or C++. And also on the right, I show S script. So for S script contract, it's very similar to class. So basically it's a template, a blueprint for how, you, how to define specific concrete smart contracts. So equivalent to object, which is also uh, instantiated from a class, uh, concrete smart contract instances are also instantiated from contract. So in a uh, contract can be think of similar to a type and with specific contract instance being a variable of that type that can be deployed onto the Bitcoin uh, network. So if you remember uh, in the first episode, we talked about uh, uh, the analogy how smart contract uh, acts as a lock in the uh, output of the each Bitcoin transaction. So this in this case, once a, an S script contract has been instantiated into a specific instance, then this can goes into the locking part of uh, uh, Bitcoin transaction in output. So let's go back. So from the overlook of this is very similar to like a class as we just talked about. It has a properties. Let's say in this case, we have a pro only one property called an integer X. We also have a constructor. So in our case, in S script, there's at most one constructor. So basically you take some parameters, you don't return anything, and it's denoted by this keyword constructor. So you can see property, it can be referred, referenced using this dot by property name as many other object oriented programming languages do. You can also have a special case uh, where if, where you have um, many properties and your contract is just doing for each property you just uh, uh, copy pretty much copy paste the the constructor parameter into the property of the same name in this case you can leave out the constructor for example in this case you have uh, three uh, properties and also you take have three pro arguments in the constructor and it in each case, you are just simply initiate the corresponding property with the argument of the same name. So in this case, because it's very and uh, uh, S script compiler will automatically generate it for you. So next, let's introduce the so-called require statement. So what is the require statement? So it uh, is uh, takes a boolean expression, and if the Boolean expression returns true, then it passes and nothing happens. Other, otherwise, it will just simply fail the entire contract. So this is very similar to the uh, assertion or assert statement in some other languages. So next, let's introduce the concept of public function. 
So let's just give uh, go to one example. I think I copy pasted the earlier example we see here in this uh, ID. I think we uh, talked about in earlier episode. So basically, each public function you can think of uh, about it as a is like uh, the main entry point into the contract. The thing about it is uh, very similar to the main function in let's say C, C plus plus or Java. It's uh, how the outside world, outside of a blockchain, they can interact with the contract you just deployed. Basically, they're calling these public functions. So it's denoted by keyword public. It's also as a function, fun followed by function name and function uh, list of function parameters. And it's worth noting that there's no return type here. So it basically, it doesn't return anything. And within the body, you can have many a statement. So in this case, we just have one required statement says the parameter you put in here must be equal to the property we initialized earlier. So when you call a contract, what does it mean when it succeeds? It means when you call it one of its public function, it runs to completion and all the conditions, Boolean conditions in the required statement are satisfied. So only in this case, we say the contract succeed. Otherwise, if any of the conditions in any of the requirement, require statement is false, then we say the, fun, the contract has a call is, is not successful. So we, after we introduce so many uh, concepts, Let's uh, get some demo to illustrate this uh, concept, abstract concept. So again, if you watch uh, one of our earlier videos, you can you can know how to deploy a contract you, uh, using uh, just by right click. Let's say deploy. In this case, we try to deploy this test, and uh, we try to initialize it because there's uh, only one uh, one constructor. With a specific, uh, on, with only one argument, we just uh, put let's say a number, uh, just say forty-two, right? So in this, this case, we initialize the contract to contain the x with value forty-two. So let's click deploy. Okay, start deploy. Okay, like now we can see it's deployed. So you can also find this in the S script deploy panel, it showed up on the leftmost. You can click here. You can see, oh, this is the contract that's been deployed. So once it's deployed, you can call its method. Uh, with, uh, we also showed it earlier. So in this case, we call the public function equal. Let's say call it. So let's say put a number. That's just for fun. Let's say we put uh, 11. So again, earlier, as we showed, we have to specify what kind of output we want to uh, append to this call contract, call transaction. So let's just, uh, as usual, let's just uh, put a so-called pay to public key hash output. I think in this demo, it doesn't matter which one, we, we just uh, put any, that's fine. We don't have to worry about the details here. So let's just, after we put 11. So what do you think will happen if I click call equal? So let's try, okay, it fails. I think, but that's not surprising because earlier we instantiated x to be equal to 42. We can also see it here. But uh, if we own, if we call with 11, of course, it's not equal. So that means the contract call is failed, as we can notice here, because 11 is not the uh, same as 42. So after we try that, let's correct it. So let's change it to 42, and uh, let's see if it uh, will succeed this time. Okay, call success, that's good. So basically that means we, we have succeed in calling this contract. So here again, we have the deployment contract. You can view it. We also have the calling contract uh, transaction. So you can, if you want, you can just click view transaction and it will take you to the Watson Chain Block Explorer. So last thing I want to cover in this uh, video is uh, in in a contract, 
you can have multiple uh, public functions. Each one of them, you can think about one way to unlock the coins that's locked up in a smart contract. As we mentioned earlier, uh, it's an analogy is a smart contract, think of it as a lock. And uh, uh, the when you call a public function is equivalent to unlock it. For example, uh, there are many cases you where you may have different many ways to unlock some coins. For example, in a very typical, let's say multi-sig contract, maybe you want to have Alice and Bob, Bob both sign, you can unlock it, or you want to have just Alice signed, but after a certain time, this is very typical. So to capture this, we you can have many, more than one uh, public functions within a contract. In this case, for example, we just expand this to have not only you can have equal, but also you can have uh, as some other one is smaller and one is larger. So let's play with this again. We can deploy it. Okay, let's uh, still use the same old number, 42. And uh, after it's deployed, you can, we can come here again. It showed up in this panel. So basically now it's deployed. But instead of having, having one uh, contract uh, method to call, we have uh, three public functions we can call. So you can see this. If you want to successfully call this one, you have to provide a Y that's the same with uh, the number 42. But if you want to, you can also uh, call other two public functions. For example, the smaller one, basically you have to provide a number that's smaller than 42. So let's try this again, try this here. So let's try to call it. And we have a parameter, uh, Y. Let's just uh, use the old number 42 again. Uh, again, let's just choose some uh, P2PK output again. So if I call smaller again, even I'm using 42 earlier, but you can see this because 42 is not smaller than 42. So uh, as expected, it fails. So if I, let's change, slightly reduce it to 41. If I call it uh, again, in this time, it succeed. So, okay, this is uh, brings us to the end of the this video. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, I will see you very soon in the in some future future videos. Thank you.